right, it is 6.30. We'll call the meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. Roll call, Mr. Lumberg. Allum. Yes. Odie. Yep. Clatt. Yes. Saxer. Yes. Schrader. Yes. All right. With that, um, the agenda is in front of us. Are there any changes to it that anybody would like to make? Yes, please. I'd like to request that general business item number three be moved above the line. All right. Uh, there was a request that general business item number three be moved above the line. If there are no other changes to the agenda, I would entertain a motion to the approve the agenda as amended, please. So moved. Second. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. That takes us, there's no community input tonight, so that takes us directly to the good news report from the BVIS Student Showcase Spring Parent Teacher Conference. Uh, good evening. The Intermediate School here is to present on our parent teacher conferences, student conferences that we just got done completing. Uh, at our school, this is our third year of existence, and um, we were challenged to be able to kind of come up with the different maybe experience for our students and conferences and taking numbers. And we've always done attendance numbers, even since I've been a teacher here, and we kind of decided to dive into them a little bit to be able to see what our attendance is and um, we have an opportunity to get parents into our building we set time aside for it and so we kind of tried to create something we've called it the student showcase uh, a unique way to provide purposeful engagement with our students and parents so the purpose uh, again was to provide an opportunity for students to reflect on to showcase and present their learning in a, in a unique way increase parent engagement and the goal obviously is to get hundred percent of our parents to attend our parent student teacher conferences um, so to do this uh, I developed a little bit of a committee and we designed uh, a couple pieces to the puzzle one of them was a student-led conference so the students would um, do some things to compile different items within there mr. Lochner will kind of speak to you about that component of it and then another part of it was how do we involve all of our encore and special teachers and different things like that to have them be able to have contact with students so we then developed a bingo card type of thing as an activity um, for the students to kind of lead their parents through, and Mr. Mueller will kind of discuss about that. So what this has done over the three years, our first year of existence, the orange or red line, however you see it, is our conference numbers for the fall, and we do those traditional style. Um, we do them in our classroom, so our teacher sets in the classroom, and then the parents can rotate around and discuss with each teacher in the fall their progress of the student and go to their band orchestra course art whatever they choose to do so um, we've continued that for all three years and those percentages are there the green is our spring conferences and the first year of existence at the intermediate school we had 61 percent the natural trend is that we've i think probably amongst most buildings is that conferences tend to decrease in attendance um, and as you can see by the numbers, we've kind of reverted and reversed that. Our first year of the spring showcase, we had 88% of our families come. Um, and this year we had 91% of our families that attended student-parent-led conferences, or student-led conferences. Uh, we've seen great numbers. Obviously our goal is to get 100%. Uh, I was talking to a teacher today about it. Actually, I was talking to Mr. Lochner about it today with different numbers. And some of that 9%, how can we hit them? What can we do with them? Some of them actually uh, have presented to their parents. They weren't able to come and signed off on it and return it back to their homeroom teacher to say, hey, we did look through the folder. We did look through the stuff that you compiled um, with the students. So those numbers aren't in there, but our goal is, again, to continue to get 100%. But we've had dramatic growth in our uh, spring conferences. Hopefully it continues to stay that way or stay above the 90% and continue to increase. Um, as we continue to evolve it and tweak some things to be able to do that. So I'm not going to speak anymore. I'm going to let um, some of the teachers speak. And then I have a couple parents here that uh, their daughter could not make it tonight. Um, but they're going to kind of speak just on their perspective from um, what they see from the conferences. So Mr. Lochner. 
All right, good evening. Uh, from the teacher's perspective, um, what we do kind of at the beginning of the year as a team in our team meetings is we sit down and just discuss with our core teachers what it is for artifacts we're going to save for the students uh, throughout the year or what we're going to have them show that night. Uh, for me, for example, that would be their digital portfolio that's something we work on in each unit anyway, which has writings in there from the year, research projects, things of that nature. Um, some other examples of things you see, um, like in science, they, they put together something for a unit, so they just showed their most recent unit and their projects they did in there. Um, I've seen things with uh, math teachers where they have a specific type of problem or skill that they want them to demonstrate in front of their parents that night um, so that they'll solve a problem or do an activity in front of their parents. It maybe takes a minute or two uh, to demonstrate that to them. And then reading has a combination of various things they're doing too. But each, each teacher, that's kind of up to them and, and what they think would be something uh, good for them to sit down with their parent and show. Um, and then we just work on collecting that or tracking that as we go throughout the year. And then as we're getting closer to conferences, um, one thing our team did, I think many did this this year, uh, we chose to uh, combine our, our teacher feedback for each individual student uh, digitally. So we thought the easiest way is in Google Drive and the team drives, we set up an individual document for each of the kids in our team. So like on our team, that's about 111 kids. Um, we set up 111 documents, each with our homeroom. And then over the course of a week or two, um, we'd go in and give strengths in areas that the student we feel can improve on in our specific subject matter. So at the end of that, um, the student would have and the parent would have a sheet from each of the core subjects. Um, and then as we're in those final weeks, some things the students do is um, they start to reflect on their strengths in areas they think they need to improve, improve on in the class. And um, they fill out some components of grades and some of the basic stuff you would see for each class. And then they also do something with our PBIS expectations, the links way. Uh, they fill out a piece on that and reflection. So by the end of it, uh, as we head into conferences, students have a, a packet that has their reflections, teacher reflections on them. Um, and then they also have their work that the teachers compiled. And um, I know many homerooms usually try to have the students practice a day or two before, uh, as we really want it to be student led. and and they have a checklist, the students do, of what they do, should do and what order when they present. And then they, uh, we schedule them a lot like an elementary teacher would. We each schedule our homeroom. And um, they come in for about 15 to 20 minutes. It takes a student to go through with their parent. Uh, we can have anywhere from one to, to five families in the room uh, doing that. And then after that time, there's about 30 minutes where um, the activity Mr. Mueller, Mueller will talk about in a little bit um, during that time is a good chance for them too to, to talk to us teachers one-on-one -on -one about uh, specific concerns they have or something like that if we haven't already done that through phone call, email, or in person. Um, so, so there's an opportunity. It's been neat to walk around and, and see the students kind of take leadership. I think that's probably something lacking in homes anymore is just kids sitting down and having conversations with their parents. So this is a structured kind of formal opportunity for them to present. Um, from my aspect, it's been I feel like in spring conferences, you come away with something. I, I walk out that night feeling like um, we accomplished something a little more than maybe the same redundant conversation that was already had at first conferences. It kind of puts the student in the center of it, and uh, us as teachers that night more is just a guide on the side. But um, many, many parents come up and discuss and ask questions during that bingo activity. Um, every once in a while, I might intervene if they just need some clarification on something during their presentations, um, just walking around the room and they might call me over. So, Mr. Mueller is going to do a much better job now. Thank you, Mr. Lochter. Good evening. Um, I will speak to you on uh, behalf of the Encore um, teachers. Um, the students are encouraged to fill out a bingo card. And on that bingo card are a number of different activities. And so that bingo card allows um, students to come into uh, specifically uh, my lab to, um, they could do a number of different things. They could show their parents an activity they completed. Uh, they could explain um, the five pillars of the Lynx Way. Um, many different activities. You know, some, some are challenging themselves to, to get a blackout, which can be pretty difficult. But uh, what it does is it allows students and it encourages them to 
come into an Encore classroom that they may just pass by, I feel, um, if we didn't have that bingo card available to them. Um, you know, it can be a busy night. We're trying to get to other conferences. Um, a lot of our parents are trying to get to the middle school at the same, on the same evening. And so this really encourages, I feel, the parents and the students to stop into those Encore teachers and uh, visit with them um, at, a, at a much higher level. So um, yeah, I guess uh, I'm just speaking on behalf of the bingo card and it's, it's been a, a fun thing for me to interact with the kids and uh, um, I've seen success with it. Um, from that perspective, so thank you. I'm not gonna try to pronounce her last name. I failed miserably. Um, so anyway, I have some parents here, their daughter Gabby, uh, Sh Sh Chevalier, there you go. The Chevaliers are here, they have a sixth grader in our building and um, Gabby could not be here tonight, but they're just gonna give a little perspective of the parent component of things. This kind of is how they saw it go. Gabrielle is at dance right now. We're going to go pick her up after this from dance. <laughs> I so, yeah. wish she could have been here. Yeah, she did. She didn't want to be here. We really liked the experience of the new format. It was it was uh, fun? It was it was interesting going around with our daughter who who led something with us. Uh, she clearly knew what she was going to do, and uh, it, it was very uh, kind of a new experience for her to be able to to uh, come out and and give us a you know, kind of run the show and, and show us what she was doing. And, and for me, one of the things that I thought was important is what a, a discussion I had with my wife was, you always hear it from a teacher's perspective, what the kids are doing, and that's, a, that's very important. I, I needed to know that. I want to know exactly what our kids are doing. Their education is very important to me. But, but I actually, right now, I think I have a little bit more rounded understanding of what she's doing. When you walk in the room, where do you go, Gap? What do you do? What, where do you get this? And she tells me exactly what she's doing. So I just have a better view of how she spends her day. Um, exactly. Okay, well, after this, where do you go? Well, we stay here after this, but then we go to there. And it's a, it's a. Uh, to me, that's an important way to understand because I think I had some misunderstandings about how she spent her day in this uh, really good school. Uh, the other part of it was uh, that, you know, we, we're from the East Coast, and uh, we have a, an opportunity to come. We thought we were, we were in a, a, a pretty good school out there. And coming here, we, we recognize that uh, all these teachers just, they just care about these kids. And uh, we're, we're not exactly sure where they found all these teachers, but... Um, <laughs> he did a good job. <laughs> you guys pick them well out there. But, um, but as far as the, 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 the format of going through this uh, yearly, I, I think it, it's an excellent format and uh, we would really like to um, see it continue. We thought it was also excellent that even though Gabby was directing and, and showing us around and, and explaining to us, the teachers were readily available for us to, if we had any questions for them and, and we got to visit with every single teacher that night. Um, it, it was just wonderful, and they were available. Uh, I think the first in the in the fall, we we didn't get to meet with one one of the teachers because there was a line. Um, understandably, I think we came late because we have so many other things going on that night. Um, but it, it was just wonderful to be able to to just visit with the teachers, and you know they're just. They're human beings. <laughs> you know? exactly. they're, they're wonderful. But we did we did move back uh, from the East Coast, and I just want to say that the school district. We have four children, three of who in the last three years have gone. We've been in all four schools. We've been in an elementary, uh, the middle school, the intermediate, and the high school. And you have a tremendous school system, and it's just wonderful. Very really, really blessed. So that's kind of the synopsis of what goes on um, and kind of how they go about things. So the structure of it is they do their student led for 15 minutes and then there's a 30 minute block where they get to go around and participate in the bingo card. If they choose not to, they may go at that time, but um, our key focus was having them present and showcase what they've been doing throughout the year. So 
Um, some stayed for a couple hours and some took off after their student-led conference. So it just kind of all varies. So if you have questions, that's all we have. Just congratulations, job well done. Administrators, teachers, moms and dads, thanks. Thank you, and um, last week I went back to school for two days, and I spent Wednesday morning over at the intermediate school where I was lost part of the time, usually in class too, because it was, I'm like if I'm supposed to be smarter than a fifth grader, it's not working. So these kids are doing things that I didn't really understand and how they're doing them and what they're learning. I, I did get to write on a piece of paper, which was good. I did answer a middle C question in music, so at least I knew a few things. And the food was awesome. So, and then I went to Valley in the afternoon and had a great experience there. Um, all sorts of fun and a little bit of chaos thrown in in the elementary grades. And then on Thursday, I went to the middle school and had a great experience in seventh grade there. I just wanted to say I should have taken Friday off to sleep <laughs> because I was pretty exhausted. So um, if you can get into the schools as board members, as parents, as you know, um, people who don't even have kids in school anymore, if you just go check it out, it's the coolest thing. And what, what our kids are doing are amazing. So I want to thank you for that experience and thank you for what you're doing to make spring conferences awesome. Uh, Madam Chair, I just want to make certain and reiterate, we're talking about a 30% a increase in spring uh, parent-teacher conference attendance growth. Um, uh, Principal Skibstead, Brandon Valley Intermediate School staff, parents, I think round of applause for increasing that, absolutely incredible. Thank you. Um, next up, uh, superintendent's report, Superintendent Larson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just want to reiterate, uh, public meeting for strategic planning, April 24th here in the community room, 5.30 p.m. Uh, tentative outline of teacher negotiations was presently, uh, uh, previously presented. Just want uh, everyone to be aware that um, we are engaging in that process. And uh, the tentative outline timeline is there for your review. Um, Brent Valley, Valley Middle School Encore class curriculum change. Um, we've spoken previously just a little bit about that. We have a natural opportunity to evaluate a change um, with the potential move to a one-to-one -one environment. In addition to that, we have the retirement of our um, current foreign language teacher. So that's giving us an opportunity to engage in, engage in some conversation about Encore um, curriculum opportunities for, uh, for our middle school students. Um, right now, the middle school administration and myself, we're, we're engaged in conversation about developing an Encore class to meet the identified needs of our middle level learners, talk digital citizenship, uh, coping skills, stress, anxiety, appropriate coping skills, and then that leads us into our um, potential uh, growth area for uh, post-secondary exploration, uh, career exploration, um, that we've discovered or identified through our strategic planning process. So engaged in that um, conversation and dialogue. Also just want to remind everyone, April 10th, is the earliest date to circulate a petition. May 11th is the deadline. Uh, we, have, we are of um, the size that requires candidates to file a financial interest statement. Um, and then, if necessary, June 19th will be the board election. So if you have any more, um, desire any more details on that, feel free to contact the business office. Also, just want to provide with you a legislative update. Today, I believe, was veto day. Um, but in the world of funding, the state of South Dakota, our, our public schools received a 1% increase in state aid. Um, so that would be for next fiscal year and ongoing. And then ultimately a 0.7% one-time money paid to districts. I believe uh, the business managers have been informed that that payment will come in June of this fiscal year. So be cognizant of the fact that we will receive a one-time payment in this fiscal year, 0.7%. And then there's ultimately some additional resources in the event you want to review some of that. I will tell you that we'll have an upcoming um, legislative overview uh, for you uh, after veto day is done. And then our, relative, our, our associate groups will provide us with um, 
a legislative overview on all of the the bills passed that impact us and any policy implica implications that may exist because of that. Also just want you to be aware of our um, one current administrative opening. Uh, Director of Instruction just want to provide you with the uh, timeline and the process that we're using for that. Uh, the position closes today at midnight. As of 5 p.m. we had 24 applicants for that position. Um, we'll begin screening applicants tomorrow. There will be a first round of interviews conducted the 28th, potentially into the 29th, depending on timing. Uh, the 29th, we will select finalists. Uh, the finalist candidates, top four candidates, will be chosen for our final round of interviews. Interview on April 3rd. Um, the interview team will consist of a high school, repre high school representative, um, administrative representative, middle school administrator, uh, intermediate school administrator, elementary school administrator, two teachers, and myself. Um, it'll be a question and answer with the large group. And then following that, will, they will receive a district tour. That tour is going to be provided by business manager Lundberg um, as the director of instruction does a lot of ordering and a lot of budgeting things, big dollar items. So we need to make certain include uh, business manager Lundberg in, um, in this process. And then uh, the last station that they will hit, they will have a um, brief question and answer with our current director of instruction who I would uh, remind everyone was curriculum director of the year this last year so what a great resource that we have uh, so she'll engage with um, our four finalists um, following our following that interview process um, individual feedback will be obtained from our interview team members and ultimately looking for a recommendation to hire submitted for your approval on the 9th it is a 12-month position with the July 1 start date. Um, with that being said, get out of school early this Thursday, two hours. I forgot to put that on this list. Two-hour early dismissal um, this Thursday. No school Friday, no school Monday. April 13th, no school for in-service. And we will have school on Friday, April 27th. So with that, I would certainly entertain any questions that you may have. Hearing no questions, thank you very much, Superintendent Larson, for the report. That takes us to general business item number one to approve the Brandon Valley Middle School one-to-one -one technology project. Uh, yes, so Madam Chair, uh, on March 12th, we presented um, the Brandon Valley Middle School one-to-one -one technology proposal. We outlined uh, within that presentation prop the proposed development process, key findings within that process, um, various options researched, and the findings of those options, um, some budget considerations, and then ultimately um, the administrative proposal is outlined below. So the Brennan Valley Middle School one-to-one -one technology proposal is school student, seventh and eighth grade student, receives an HP ProBook laptop, charger, and protective sleeve. Devices are able to be taken home. Uh, $20 insurance fee or homeowners. Uh, basically, the framework for insurance is modeled after the high school um, strategy. Uh, appropriate use, parental consent, paperwork, all of that is required prior to distribution. Um, we will provide our parents with resources regarding digital citizenship tips for their home. Um, we will have mandatory digital citizenship training for our students. And then in addition to that, we will have ongoing digital citizenship curriculum as, uh, as discussed within our Encore um, switch and or change. Uh, with that, the one staffing item to note is assistant principal Frecking will be shifted to the middle school for the 18-19 school year to provide those additional supports for um, not only students, but also staff, instructional coaching, um, Etc. So uh, that would be the, the, the framework of our proposal. Um, a little inf additional information that I did want to provide, some examples of what we are choosing not to do uh, for the 2018-19 school year with the implementation of uh, uh, the Brandon Valley M Middle School project. Um, as outlined within your uh, five-year plan, I would note that we had a, an elementary request for additional carts. Um, so if an elementary or we, have, we basically have three elementaries that are running in between 500 and 575 kids. Um, when we have additional technology that we infuse into one of those buildings, we basically have to duplicate that at each one of those buildings as we, uh, 
have to ensure that we have a strong viable curriculum across the district and um, equity access to technology. So that's the item that I would note. So ultimately what we're choosing not to do when we choose to do the, uh, the middle school one-to-one -one project, one-to-one -one technology project is 10 additional carts at the elementary level um, or you could look at it as approximately $450,000 in operational requests. When you look at the capital outlay um, preliminary budget, you can see there's about that amount in um, requests that aren't filled. I would note that we are, we are completing our needs. Um, those $450,000 worth of requests, you know, may, for example, the east entry doors, they're functioning. They are getting towards the life of the, uh, the end of their life expectancy, but we certainly can um, utilize those same doors for um, an additional school year. So um, that's an example that I would, would note that all of the all of the operational needs are met. Um, so with that, it's our my administrative recommendation to approve the Brandon Valley Middle School one to one technology proposal would certainly entertain uh, any questions or thoughts that you may have. I'll start. <clears throat> when we considered, uh, over a, a long length of time, when we considered going one-to-one -one at the high school, there was a very lengthy um, and a much appreciated educational process for um, lots of us, for well, for, for the board, but I think for a lot of people in our school district. Um, I recall Dr. Talcott spent an enormous amount of time and energy making sure stakeholders understood the impact of going one-to-one -one at our high school level. So my first question would be, why are we not involved in somewhat of the same kind of process here. So um, lots of questions come to mind. Who decided the device? Is this the device that all the teachers want? How are the teachers going to be um, trained to implement the technology in their classroom? Um, probably most importantly, a question at the top of my mind would be, how will this infusion of technology revolutionize instruction at the middle school level? How will this change outcomes at the middle school level? How will we have a cost savings in paper consumables um, like we're seeing at the high school level? There's just lots and lots and lots of questions. And as a school board member, I have a really hard time giving up other technology so that we can be one-to-one -one in the building when I haven't heard yet how this will improve the education of our students, how the outcomes will improve, um, how our teachers are going to be on board with this. Um, there's, there's lots of questions. I have lots. So I don't know if anybody wants to take a stab at beginning some of that, but I, I sort of feel like we're um, quite frankly, being rushed to make a hasty decision without having all the information. Well, I would tell you that uh, regarding the teachers, there were three or four surveys uh, who divided? Who decided? The, so that's how we how we uh, developed um, the general understanding. I'll tell you if you remember back when we completed the first survey, 80 some odd percent of our teachers were in favor of um, of the one to one environment. Um, so 80 some odd percent of our teachers supported that. So I would I would point to that fact. Um, the the question regarding um, who chose the device? Our teachers chose the device. They were very clear with the middle school administration and myself regarding what they wanted for a device, which is why we are at an HP ProBook laptop with a Windows operating system. Um, 
how will they be trained to uh, infuse the technology into their instruction? I would tell you that they've already received training regarding um, infusing technology into their instruction. They do have some CART accessibility already, so it is happening. This is for the teachers, so they ha have um, better access to technology, as that was identified years ago in our teacher needs survey regarding what they felt they needed to better improve instruction within the middle school. So I would lean on that regarding um, how, we will, how, we'll, how we will infuse or utilize the technology with instruction, with, uh, within our instruction at the middle school. Um, undoubtedly, there will be ongoing professional development that has to occur um, just like it does at the high school level, um, when we talk about the infusion of technology at the high school level, whether it's talking about um, a standard um, a standard system that they utilize for a platform. Um, so I would tell you that the, 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 the training is ongoing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the high school teachers had an entire school year before the students received laptops and throughout the course of that school year, please correct me if I'm wrong, throughout the course of that school year there were several, there were several opportunities to um, become better acquainted with the technology but, but more importantly to start to devise ways to improve instruction. But it took a whole school year. The teachers receive their uh, computers uh, about a semester out in January, um, and but we didn't. The, the bulk of the training for the teachers uh, was done in the summer prior to the students receiving theirs. So we did a um, kind of a model after the old TTL Academy that they used to have at the state or whatever, and that was done in June and made available. Most of the teachers took advantage of that. Uh, four to eight days, depending on, on whatever. Um, so that was probably a bulk of what we, we did. So do we have the same type of thing set up for middle school teachers? We don't as of right now, and I've talked, I've talked to um, Marge a little bit about that. Um, through um, this summer, we would have to use some curriculum money, obviously, to do that, um, to do that. And then also, um, part of our pre-in service would be the bulk of that would be um, me spending some time with my teachers on the use of the device and how they're going to use it. Now we've been building up to that because our teachers been you they've they've had carts in their rooms, uh, not each cart, and that that's one of the difficult parts is. Um, you know, we, we basically have to share those cards and sometimes the frust frustration level comes in where cards aren't available and those types of things. Um, so obviously that professional development is a key thing and that's something that falls on me that I need to do that to be quite honest with you. Um, and between Mr. Frecking and myself, you know, we would develop a plan to do that. Change is difficult for anybody, um, and this would be somewhat of a change, although we are using it right now. If you go up and down our hallways, we are using them daily. Those carts are being used um, almost every class period. Um, I have a group of, of staff members that are um, ecstatic about this. They want to take it to another level and that sort of thing. Um, but that also takes some time. Um, and, and getting back to your question, I mean, the devices that we talked about were the Chromebook versus HP, and our teachers overwhelmingly like our HPs. We have those HPs right now, and, and from my understanding, they're, they're very compatible with what we have right now, and our teachers are very, very comfortable with that. Um, you know, and, and to learn both systems, that we think that's a good thing, to be quite honest with you. Um, so I, I think there are a lot of positives. Um, you know, I did survey my ESD colleagues. We are one of the last middle schools not to have some device in their hands. Um, uh, there is one school that has carts, a cart per room, um, but I've done a, a lot of talking there. Uh, just to determine the ins and outs because they've already kind of been through it to be honest with you. So we've learned from them 
most of them tell me don't go iPads. That is not one thing. In fact, a lot of them are looking at the HP, to be quite honest with you. Um, because um, one thing is the cost, and, and it provides everything that middle school kids need, uh, to be quite honest with you. So the professional development is a key, and that's a phase that we are going to have to um, determine here in the near future, you know, um, um, and how are we going to implement this? How are our teachers going to use it? It's a tool for them, and that's one thing that I think our staff needs to understand. When I was in class on Thursday, I think the, the frustration I felt coming from one science room to the other is they were both working on starfish lab dissection tests that day. Only one of them could use the computers at that time versus the other class. And they were supposed to be doing the same thing on the same day. And so Mrs. Erickson said, you know, it will be so nice when we have enough computers here for everyone to use. And when you've got three kids buzzing around one little computer, it's really not, doesn't work well when it's, this is built for one person to be, you know, so that's the first thing I noticed. I also learned how to download, upload cloud, whatever you want to call it, from Word to Google Drive and back. I'm so glad I went to that class because I had no idea. And then I wondered why it looked stupid when it showed up in Google Drive. Well, I got that explained to me. So I mean, there are just, there are things that I could see just from being in school for a very limited time, how this was going to benefit I, there were just things I noticed that I was frustrated with because I couldn't necessarily see a computer all the time. Well, and I think, Doc, uh, yes, you know, I've expressed my, my concerns a little bit to Dr. Larson about the management. We're talking about middle school kids here. And if you've seen my lost and found, um, if you've seen the book bags on the benches and things like that, um, you would understand why. Um, but those are all responsibilities that we need to teach and hold those kids accountable. Am I going to say it's going to be perfect? not in a middle school setting by by any means but i can tell you one thing the kids value their smartphones like they're a million dollars and my guess would be if they get a computer in their hand they're going to value them very highly just like they would their cell phone if a, if a student loses their cell phone during the day it's like the world stops we need to find that cell phone um, but we know there's going to be those management issues that, that we are going to have to deal with. We fully understand that. Um, but I also truly believe it's time for us um, to go to one-to-one, -to, -one, to be quite honest with you. Because I think, um, um, and it will take some time. Don't get me wrong, it's gonna take some time um, to get everybody acquainted um, and make how they implement in their classroom and those sorts of things. It will, it will take some time. But there is a frustration level um, that we don't have um, access when they want it, when they need it, um, you know, when they can best use it in their classroom. Um, now, we're way better than we were four years ago. Don't get me wrong, we're way better. Um, but uh, as the need continues and as more um, uh, lessons and, and more opportunities um, are online, it gives us our, our, our students another opportunity to learn in uh, a different way. I'll give you a couple thoughts, too, probably, because, you know, we've been there. First of all, for us, we really felt that the implementation is, is really a three-year. So, you know, don't, don't have these unrealistic expectations in year one. Um, and it's a process into year two and, and then, you know, into year three so that you're really kind of in that process. They'll be there too. Probably they'll, they'll accelerate at a faster pace than us. First of all, they, they have a whole cadre of colleagues at the high school who bend. So when you're going to start talking about are we going to use Google Docs, are we going to use Schoology, are we going to whatever, Google Classroom, what are you going to use, what works for you, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter which device you have. You can use all of those things, and you already have high school colleagues who've set that up and who've done that. You also have a, a whole cadre of older brothers and sisters for many of these kids who have that tool available to them. And, and you know, I'm in the situation where I have a student in college and a student in high school, and if, I, if there's something going on with my computer, I just say, Evan, come here, to fix this. Or wh wh how come, you know, and, and just, you know, and, and that's, they're gonna have that resource available in terms of taking care of them um, uh, 1100 uh, we got them all we got two that are out that we're waiting for kids to bring back to us that have left us but we haven't we haven't had a kid lose a computer now we've had one driven over by a car and we've had a few other things that are going to happen that's what you have insurance for you know and, and all of that but they do take care of it 
uh, because I'll tell you that that computer is more important to them than the sweatshirt you bought them from whatever college or whatever. They, the computer matters more to them. And so, and I don't think that'll be any different. I think Brad's thought about the smartphone and he's exactly uh, correct. Um, you know, as long as you have teachers buy in that that's something they want and this is the tool they want and they want to go forward, you'll be fine. You know, it'll, it'll take time and they will definitely need to do some summer things and whatever. They'll be fine. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. um, one item I is I was not here for the the one to one proposal and development for the high school, so I can't actually speak to at all how that looked or went. Um, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that prior to the adoption of the one to one at the high school, you didn't have one Apple MacBook anywhere grades 12 through 5. Is that accurate or? Okay, so for managing managing software or managing a network, you had Apple. But for students and staff, you were not on an Apple device. Okay, so my, my, my point to that is naturally your staff need them for a longer period of time to prepare themselves to teach students. Six months, whatever it is. The device that is going into the hands of our teachers and our kids for all intents and purposes, is the same exact device that they are currently using at the middle school, which is probably part of the reason why their feedback was so strong regarding which device they would like. So um, that's just an observation that I wanted to make that, that I had to guess that that was a part of the reason why you gave your teachers as long as you did with the device. Um, and just, just an item I wanted to note for the board's sake. So I appreciate some of the comments. I think something that struck out was Hard, harder for some than others. The thing is we're not going to see everybody. So there's going to be some that are going to be really happy and excited about the device we choose and some are not. We have that dispute in my house all the time between tech and PC. I won't tell you who's right. Um, but <laughs> I think the other thing is that with all that, there's also this trend going towards technology. We're going to have a second grader who there's more and more things that people can come home and do on the computer. We're talking about middle school. So I know being with technology and tricks and conversations that we know that there's more opportunities that we can implement on technology. And I think you asked the question about what cost we save. I don't know if we're to save cost going to technology. We might have more um, things that we can update go farther and faster and we can use the technology route. Paper, yeah, I think there might be potentially, but to your point, maybe not right away, not really right away. We just have the opportunity to move a little bit with the time, a little bit faster. This is where our students are. This is where they're living in. So I just want to couple of years of experience, maybe, that we've been in. Um, if you had asked me to answer that question two years ago, um, I probably would have given you an answer the best what I thought was going to happen or whatever. But I'm, I'm confident to say that I wouldn't have been able to share a number of the things that I have then seen in the last two years. There are going to be things that are going to happen in the classroom that they can't imagine will happen because you haven't had the tool before and consequently you haven't opened your mind as a teacher, for instance, to the possibility. Or the student hasn't opened their mind to the possibility of how they would complete that particular project 
but now all of a sudden we have this tool in it, in it. so it, it is so very hard to say how specifically is this going to change what we do. Um, it will definitely change things and then what, what eventually happens is we don't remember a time when we didn't have them. And we haven't had them in our building for that long. And I'm going to tell you that even our, our juniors and seniors who didn't have them in their first years would tell you that it feels like they've had them the whole time. And they can't really, you know, imagine. And then so many of our kids who've then gone to that next step, whether it's the tech school or the college or whatever, it, it's just been a kind of a natural transition. Well, this is, this is how we do our work. This is how we turn in our assignments. This is how I get my book. This is, it's just, it, it, it's just so just kind of a, a, a natural process. So I think it's hard to, to quantify sometimes or to give so very specific about how this will be. Um, I can just tell you that we're in, we're in that tran transformation process. Uh, we're not totally there yet and, I, and you're not going to totally take everything over. But that's what's going to happen. So it's just, it's really, it's hard just to lay it out and say, these are the things you should expect. This is when you should expect them by. Um, the, the, the key pivotal piece will be providing them um, training, providing the teachers training and giving the kids um, opportunities um, to fail forward, to try some things that don't work and try something else and those kinds of things. Um, that's just based on, on our two years of our doing our things. I think you could talk to lots of schools who've been in it longer than we have. Um, I, I fully am I'm so pleased at where we are today and I feel like we're so much further along than I ever thought we would be at, at this point. Um, and I'm seeing some amazing things in all sorts of classrooms that um, I guess I wouldn't have imagined but I didn't know what to imagine. You can go to site visits all you want until you're actually in your school doing your things, you really, you know. Um, so I think to get concrete in answer, Sandy, I think it's going to be kind of hard. Um, a certain amount of it is on faith. You have, as you heard from the Chevaliers, if you grew up in Aberdeen, you know how to pronounce that name. Uh, but in the Chevaliers, only because we had a Dr. Chevalier, but uh, the, the Chevaliers, um, you know, we have a good district and we have tremendous teachers with great passion. And I don't think that given an opportunity, I've ever seen any of our teachers waste it given tools by us. I don't think I've ever seen a group of our teachers waste those. Um, so a certain part of that is is, is, is trust the professionals and trust the, tra the track record and, and you'll get what you invest in. I really believe that. So. I'll speak very briefly to
chair of the Attached Foundation Nitrogen Trailer Preliminary Capital Outlay Project provides low fuel support for 1819 capital outlay expenditures. The district's capital outlay requests have been prioritized, itemized, and appropriately budgeted for within the request. It is important to note the approval of the preliminary capital outlay budget is necessary for our business office and director of operations to pursue quotes and bids for larger projects. It is also important to note that the bid environment or market um, and the respective numbers received on those larger projects may impact the ability to complete all items within the preliminary capital outlay budget. I do want to commend Business Manager Lundberg on his excellent and collaborative work with the preparation of the 1819 preliminary capital outlay budget. Uh, with that, I would turn it over to Mr. Lundberg for any additional comments, thoughts, insights. Just quickly review the summary page there for you. The revenue is $5,380,000 from tax revenue and a little bit of donations. So about $5.4 million total revenue. 675000 goes to the general fund to cover expenses that we started when we had the big cutback and uh, we've transferred some general fund expenses to the capital outlay or paid for them out of the capital outlay. That's continuing on. Then we have $555,000 <coughs> of debt service. That's the debt on the intermediate school. So it leaves us with $4,175,000 of equipment and building needs and furnishings and, and so on. The detail is behind there of the 4,175,000. Of that 4 million, almost 25%, 1.1 1 .1 million is in the area of technology. Any specific questions on the, on the detail of it? About 99% of the items were approved. Very little got cut back in the instructional areas. I have a couple of questions. Um, on the special services, the yellow blocks weren't coded at the bottom, but with, is that because that comes from a different fund? Yeah, we're able to purchase the stuff that's student related out of the special education fund as assistive technology. So those items will be purchased. They'll just be purchased out of the special education fund. Okay, and then I had another question. Um, why is the textbook adoption dollar amount, um, the budgeted amount is 50% less than the requested amount in all four elementary buildings, but then in the intermediate school, the budgeted amount is three times the requested amount, and then in the middle school and the high school, it's even Steven. That's because that I'm, I'm putting these numbers together probably nine months before even anybody is even able to spell curriculum adoption. And uh, so I'm trying to put something together to prepare us for where we're going. And then when we figure out how to spell curriculum adoption later on in the process, then we get the actual numbers. And uh, when I got these numbers from Mars, the elementary was more inclined to going towards an online version. And the intermediate school was a textbook and on, online in the middle school the same way. So that's what bumped those up. So it was just, it's just me shooting numbers in there. And, and, uh, and then when the actual numbers come in, we put them to the actual numbers. So it's not any big variation. It's just when I'm putting this together originally, I'm just taking shots in the dark on how much they'll spend. So it, not any indication that no. they get half of no, what they no, need? No, no, no. It's no, just okay. a change just in, the in the direction that they went. Okay. She, uh, and I might expound on that, she, Marge knows that she has a, a budget of X amount of dollars to work with, and she works within that K-12. And so when she's putting all the numbers together, uh, that may change from an elementary to a middle school or however it, it works there. I would note, I believe this is science, correct, Paul? Yeah. This is, so this is science. So when you look at the science um, the adoption that we will be having, that's the mystery science um, that is that cost. That's that cost. So just note that. I believe it's um, social studies will be in this year's um, adoption. So this is the science piece of that curriculum. Just a note. Any other specific questions? 
very, uh, as I said, very technology driven. I just heard before I came to work or came to the board meeting tonight, uh, Sioux Falls School District, which is about six times as large as Brandon Valley, spends $4 million a year on technology. So six times 1.1 would be about 7 million. So you can do the comparison there on what we spend on technology versus our neighbors to the, to the west. Thank you very much. Anyone have any other questions? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the 2018-2019 capital outlay preliminary budget summary as presented. So moved. Second. There's been a first and a second. All of those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. That takes us to item number three to approve the PATH program memorandum of understanding for the Brandon Valley Middle School. I just asked for this to be above the line because <clears throat> there were a couple of questions upon reading through all the information um, that I know can be answered. And I thought if I had these questions, there would probably be others that had the, lots of questions. And since uh, mental health is becoming a really important issue, especially at the middle school level, I thought it would be great if Brad would help us out and clarify a couple of points. Sure. Thank you. Um, absolutely. Um, Sandy talked to me before the board meeting and I would be glad to kind of explain this program. First of all, this program will be no cost to you as a board or as to the district. It's a, a free service um, to us that is um, funded by the United Way. Um, so the United Way provides the funds for this program. This program is in several schools in this area and we have checked out with other schools, we've called other counselors and they believe it's a fantastic program. What it is, is um, they work very closely with my counselor. My counselor provides them um, with recommendations um, of people who may need further educate or uh, counseling so um, what she does is she contacts the parents makes them aware of this service it is totally up to them whether they want to participate or not um, once um, we've got the application back that they want to participate we sign a signed release of information going back and forth and then we work very closely um, with this counselor this counselor is a licensed professional um, hired by L, um, LLS and again supported by United Way. Um, all we do is provide them with people that we believe need extra help or would be um, willing to accept extra help and then all we have to do is provide them a space of which we have a space, we have several spaces. Um, but another goal is is not only is it individual counseling, but in many instances it turns into family counseling. And that's really what we're, we're looking forward, is trying to get these kids not only additional counseling help for whatever issue there may be, but also get the parents involved. Uh, and that's the success that they've seen, is if they've seen this where the parents now come in, they buy into it, um, and then it kind of turns into a family counseling situation so like I said we have talked to several school districts in this area um, they just talk so positively about it um, when they approached us at the middle school um, they said they would like to try it in the Brandon Valley School District and they'd like to start at the middle school um, my counselor Jody Robertson and I um, talked to them we've met with the counselor we've interviewed that counselor um, so we've done all of that back uh, around work I took it to dr. Larson and said this is a program that we would like to pursue um, so and, and there it is and the, the memorandum of, of understanding is there before you um, and we truly believe it will help us in the long run so um, I just wanted to reiterate it is no cost to the district um, um, the work on the front end is our part to get people involved um, and then from there they kind of take over to be quite honest with you I would make two notes just to make like to make two notes on that um, one item is that the the counseling services that are provided so after the referral process happens and um, if a family or a student if they decide to engage in those mental health services through LSS or the PATH program Luther Lutheran Social Services um, if they have 
insurance, their insurance is billed. Uh, if they do not have insurance, then that's when the United Way funding um, comes into play. The other item that I would note is we had a level of interest uh, at our elementary level, intermediate school level as well. We did reach out to the PATH program and ask them if we could implement K through eight. At this time, they do not have uh, the secured funding from the United Way to offset those costs. So they want us to pilot at the middle school. And then I have requested to be on their short list for expansion programs in the future. And as we all know that we, if we expand, we need to expand to all of our elementaries. Um, and then naturally we would need to include our inter intermediate school as we don't want to have a gap in those types of services. So that request has been made. We are on the short list for, uh, the PATH program at the elementary and intermediate school level. Just an item to note. I would just make one other comment. Um, if this is approved tonight, um, the, their plan is to start uh, April the 4th. And their plan is to come in every Wednesday to our schools for a full day, um, once a week. But they would like to start this as soon as April 4th. So if it is approved tonight, we can make the phone call tomorrow and it will be off and running. So thank you. Runs just a school year, so like the summer, the summer gap. They, they said they would try um, to stay in contact with these people over the summer, especially if they've built a relationship. Um, you know, and the parents want to continue. That's the big thing: is the parent buy-in and continue over the summer, because, like Dr. Larson said, it is billed to their insurance, so they can continue through this. It just probably wouldn't obviously happen at the school it would be off-site and they do off-site visits also just so you know that so um, you know I, I think what they're trying to do is build that rapport and that connection once that's built um, if parents decide they can continue it for however long they would like to so um, like I said I th we think it's a really good program and something that uh, will help us in the middle school Madam Chair, first we'll go with our general fund uh, staffing request. Would note uh, requesting an EL teacher for our EL program district wide. Uh, this is due to an increased number of eligible students across the district and is necessary as we work to provide the supports uh, needed for them to receive the high quality education. Uh, we are seeking approval for a Brandon Valley High School math slash science teacher. I would note that we are looking for a little flexibility in our advertisement of um, this position. When we, when we advertise it, it will be interviewed or uh, advertised as math slash science. And we, we are, the, the, the sciences that we're looking for are physical science and chemistry. Um, and in addition to uh, the math component, that allows us to wa uh, widen, our, widen our scope and have the very best pool of candidates and biggest pool of uh, pool of candidates possible as we're able to manage our current folks that are in-house uh, depending on what the pool is so we can attract the very best teachers available. With the increased uh, enrollment at our high school, we will be moving an individual who is currently half-time Spanish, half-time English to full-time English, uh, creating the necessity for a high school Spanish teacher. You can see um, that listed there as well. We will utilize a growth pool uh, strategy just as we have in the past, recommending um, the need for two additional 
K-4 teachers. This will allow us to take a proactive approach to growth. Uh, I would note that like right now with our, our current numbers today, if we started today, we would probably only need two teachers in our elementary. Um, and then we would have the one position, Mrs. Beasley, who previously tendered her uh, retirement notice. Um, we will hire for that position as well. However, we want to have some space to allow for open enrollment um, requests at that kindergarten level. So we may need an additional section of kindergarten depending on um, what we get over the course of the next six months. We could potentially utilize that person at the intermediate or middle school depending on um, core need there uh, or also potentially um, as the reading specialist as I'll note here a little bit later. Uh, in addition to that, we would like to advertise for two five eight teachers. At this time, I would anticipate them being at the intermediate school uh, because our intermediate school tends to see a little more infusion of student growth than our middle school. But again, wanting to uh, make the very best decision we can, we want to take the information closer to the event. So as we get closer to next fall, we'll be able to um, assign them in a better fashion. Principal Skibstead, Principal Thorson able to work together as the, the general concept of a, a math slash uh, social science or a math slash science. They can work those, um, work those things out as they plan to open what ultimately is a half a team um, as we look at it. Curriculum slash Brandon Valley Intermediate School Administrative Assistant. So with the one-to-one -one at the middle school and the shift of Principal Frecking to the um, middle school full-time for next year, we're going to station our director of instruction out of the intermediate school. Um, they're responsible for instruction, curriculum, professional development, and assessment. And ultimately, that administrative assistant will be able to provide them supports with managing um, subscriptions to magazines and um, helping make certain that uh, folks are getting what they need, uh, teachers are getting what they need as far as resources, and then inputting student names into databases and those types of things um, is what that person ultimately will be able to help with, in addition to provide some supports there in the intermediate school office, um, as Principal Frecking will be gone, et cetera. And I would note that the, the placement of the director of instruction at the um, intermediate school will also provide some supports for Principal Skipstead in the event that he has a situation arise where he would require an additional administrator to be involved in an interview or something like that. They are able to walk across the hall and say, Director of Instruction, could you join me for um, a few moments while I interview uh, this student? I need a witness present. That, that's a t general concept of um, that idea or that move. Um, an increase in sign language to 0.85, it is currently a 0.5. Uh, high school resignation has dictated this need. And then the last two items that I would note is we currently have a 1.0 FTE and we currently have a 0.4 FTE and those individuals service um, in elementary P, those individuals service Fred Assam Elementary and Valley Springs Elementary. And what I would propose to do is I would propose to create, uh, to take your 0.4 FTE to a 1.0 FTE. And this is um, solving a variety of, of items that I would note. Um, first and foremost, I would tell you that this gives Fred Assam one full-time equivalent, one full-time PE teacher. But uh, more importantly, it gives Fred Assam a 1.0 counselor. So Brandon Elementary, currently 580 some odd students, um, they have a full-time counselor. Robert Bennis Elementary, again, 520 some odd students, full-time counselor. Fred Assam Elementary, almost 500 students, they're working with a 0.7 counselor. So this, this transition would allow that Fred Assam counselor to go 1.0 um, full-time. Um, with that change, with that half time, uh, the increase of that teacher allows us to do is we're allowed to take our Valley Springs PE teacher, who's about half time, and have them teach reading 
half time. So they'll be in the gymnasium half the time and uh, providing that physical education instruction. And then the other half of the, t half of the time, they will provide direct reading instruction to our elementary kiddos um, that Principal Palmer is currently doing. So that takes her out of that reading instruction component. Uh, then the transition for Principal Palmer would be 0.5 principal, which is what she currently is, receives um, half half time admin, uh, principal pay, um, and then transition her to a 0.3 counselor, which is the equivalent of the counseling time that they currently receive out there, and then still utilize her as a reading specialist 0.2 of that time as a reading specialist provides um, instructional coaching and working with data and whatnot um, another item that i i can consistently heard is with uh principal paul providing that direct instruction to our reading groups if interrupted to do principal duties if uh, an individual needs to be um, worked with in the capacity of a principal she's then pulled out of that instruction capacity um, and they have to overcome that so our hope is we can eliminate the um, interruptions to instruction um, so please note that item i've been in direct contact and worked with the south dakota department of education regarding um, certification and coding and uh, have a um, viable solution that works on all of those recommendations. Uh, the other item that I would note is our teach well placements. Um, an additional $25,000 due to increased need and capacity at our alternative setting. Uh, what I can say is that we see an increased need in that area. Uh, it, is, it is a challenge to manage exactly what that need will be as um, one event can impact multiple kids and drive that cost up or down, I would say. So um, at this point in time, we are presenting uh, that $25,000 increase. So with that, I would tell you that is a funding staff increase of over $576,000. And then I would just note some staff reductions. Um, Five eight reading specialists, uh, as we know, our current five eight reading specialist, uh, Mrs. Moore, has tendered a resignation. Um, would recommend at this time not filling that position specifically, but rather focusing on our our, our um, classroom needs. And then we have a five six EA position that is um, not being filled. And then ultimately, 0.5 industrial tech. Uh, is being eliminated because our high school resi uh, uh, registrations have dictated the need to reduce that. Our current um, ag teacher will be moved from a 0.5 position to a 1.0 position and teach both um, our ag classes and then our ag industrial technology classes as well. So um, that's a $32,000 reduction. So those staffing reductions are $127,000 with the total general fund staffing increased request of $450,000 approximately. Uh, general fund. I can go to special ed fund, but at this point, I would certainly entertain any questions you have on general fund staffing request. Uh, I, I had a question with something you said about. Other questions for Superintendent Larson on the new positions for the 2018-19 school year? General fund. Or general fund, sorry. All right. Um, one more quick question. 
on the page where the next page at the top okay so I'm just looking at the breakdown of positions with the additional 0.6 PE mm -hmm. um, I, I read this about 12 times and I couldn't figure it out but I I know you have the numbers figured out so that's fine um, but I just was curious how often do we see a principal that also serves as a counselor and a reading specialist like like let's I mean Mrs. Palmer is a rock star but let's just say that she has to move away are we going to be able to fill that position if that's the job description I'm just really hoping Principal Palmer doesn't move away no, the answer to that question is there are a wide variety of makeups in um, administrative duties when you talk about a school of 115 some odd kiddos. Um, there are districts that have a, an elementary principal and a superintendent. There are districts that have a superintendent and a K-4 um, a K-4 counselor. There, so I guess I would say depending on your need, depending on your size, and depending on what you have available for staffing, the makeups across the state of South Dakota are very diverse. Um, so that's what that would be my that would be my general comment. If I had to. Um, if I had to advertise said position, um, you would be looking for an individual that has um, a master's degree in curriculum and instruction, could serve in the capacity of a half-time principal, could serve in the capacity as a point two reading specialist, and could serve in the point three capacity as a counselor coded as a student advisor in the PRF. That would be your solution. And you could get applicants, you will get applicants in South Dakota. Yeah. Okay. I, yes, I believe someone would be willing to do that work uh, to get into our district for sure. Yep. If nothing else, I'll go with Stan. Very good. Uh, special education funding request. Again, I should have noted this at the beginning, uh, utilizing 65000 per full-time equivalent for teaching positions and $30,000 for our, for our EAs. Um, I would note that those numbers are via business manager Lundberg and the five-year planning process. Um, and I also put a special note on here because special education is one of the most challenging departments we, we can plan for as one pupil moving in and or out can have a dramatic impact on staffing needs. So that's one item that I would note. Um, so Brennan Valley High School special education teacher. Due to the increased special education population and needs of Brennan Valley High School, we will be making an assignment transfer from the LEAPS program. So we currently have two special education teachers in our LEAPS program. One of those individuals will be transferred to the high school. So that's not an additional cost, but rather just an internal transfer. Your additional cost will come with um, your LEAPS EA. And I would tell you that following an evaluation and reflection, uh, Director Babb and I have formulated the plan to move to one lead teacher in the LEAPS program and then support that individual with um, with EA support. So right now we have three students within that program and I would tell you that depending on whether or not we see an increased need in LEAPS, we may have to shuffle one of our, our newly hired EAs there or they may have to go elsewhere in the event that we have a student move in, etc. So um, that's, the, uh, that's the item that I would note regarding LEAPS. Uh, three special education EAs due to our increased special education population needs within the Brandon Valley School District. So um, we have some, some unique circumstances within our deaf education program, and we may need to utilize one of our EAs within that program, um, whereas we attend Harrisburg because they run the deaf education program currently. So we may need to utilize that individual to transport said students, be with those kids and transport back. Um, anyway, that's just an example of the type of flexibility that we may need when dealing with um, our special education programming. But at this point in time, we see a need for three special education EAs somewhere throughout the district. Uh, you see some additional OT days there. 
as well as additional teach well placements. Uh, total staffing increase of approximately $156,000 in the special education staffing area. would certainly entertain any questions you have. been a first and a second. All of those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. That takes us to items two, three, and four under consent approval under personnel. I entertain a motion to approve those as presented. There's been a first and a second. All of those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Um, under communication, there's a thank you note there for your review. Uh, board reports, does anyone have a formal board report that they would like to present tonight? Madam uh, Chair, I would remind our safety committee, uh, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, sorry, 7 a.m. Wednesday morning uh, at the central office. 